down a lot of just shit like this, nigga. And I ain't even said it or wrote it yet. I just feel it, you know? Yeah. Overtime, cause I ain't have a mic. UCLA Radio, what's good? It's your boy DJ Wisco in the building. You are now tuned in to Foresight, and we have a very special guest in the building. Today we have a 20-year-old tech guru and postmodernist from Harbor City, California. From learning Java at the age of 10 to developing his first app based on the original iPhone in 2008, to developing the ACDI interface for Uber's self-driving car, it's my honor to introduce Idris Sand. What up, what up? What's good with it? How you feeling? Good, good, you already know. Yeah, yeah, so we're gonna get right into it. So, uh, you know, as previously mentioned, you learned to code at the age of 10. Yeah. You wanna break that down? Like, what interested you and inspired you to, like, you know, even to get into that? Yeah, so, like, um, growing up, I was always, uh, you know, involved in, like, tech and stuff. Um, you know, I still, like, vividly remember being a kid and breaking down remote TVs and remote controllers and just finding, like, the infrared sensor, just playing with it. But I didn't have no direction. You know, growing up, being a black kid in Harbor City at the time, you know, growing up in parts of Cobbington, growing up in parts of Inglewood, there was no direction, there was nothing like coding classes, you know. So, um, you know, what is a kid uh, that, you know, wants to make a difference at a time where, you know, there's not much you could do, um, what does that kid do? Um, I started, you know, searching and questing for knowledge. And through that process, you know, um, I came across Steve Jobs. And so I remember watching a podcast, I mean, listening to a podcast, and, you know, Steve Jobs comes on and he's like, this is our new phone, this is back in 2008. So he goes, this is our new phone, you know, the iPhone, and it's, we're launching like a SDK with it, and it's the first time where, you know, regular people could create regular apps for regular people. And, you know, one of the developers goes, you know, well, this is an awesome concept, but there's only two apps on his phone. And so Steve goes, you know, that's why we need people like you, you know, that are readily available to bring your ideas to life and, you know, just execute. So um, that inspired me, man. So, I, you know, that summer um, I started going to the library, you know, this is back in 2008. I was 10, 11 at the time. Um, and then I would try and get as much knowledge as I could. But then one day, man, I went up to the library and I was actually reading on uh, C Sharp um, in Java. You know, this kid came up to me and, you know, he snatches it out of my hand and he goes, you shouldn't be reading that. That ain't meant for people like you. That's not meant for people of your color. And so it was at that point that I identified that, oh snap, we're intentionally being held back to, you know, be able to create things like this. I hear that, I hear that. And then so your brilliance was recognized by the Obama administration as you developed the first universal high school mobile software application and also the advocacy for a STEM curriculum. So what was that like to meet Obama? You know what I'm saying? And what was that meeting about? Man, Barry, Barry's cool, man. Barry, he cool. <laughs> But um, the backstory behind that is, you know, so I had this uh, intention of just solving problems, didn't know where to start. So fast forward, you know, after interning for Snapchat, Instagram, Uber, creating stuff over there, you know, and even Boeing, Raytheon, creating jet propulsion systems, um, you know, high school started. And so I created this app for my school, Narbonne High School, which would give students turn by turn directions to navigate through the class. Because I realized there was like an order and chaos thing going around where there wasn't enough staff members equipped to, you know, go do this and go do that. And then, you know, two weeks later, I'm just chilling. You know, I checked my email and, you know, the header was White House of the United States. Open it up, it's an email saying President Obama wanted to meet. Um, fast forward, you know, sit down with him, uh, received the Presidential Scholar Award. Um, year after that, we meet again and he commissioned me to start the first youth led STEM commission in LA. Um, so that was really interesting and, you know, it just further, um, again, this further inspired me to, you know, go in the fields of education and, uh, and impact others. You know, the best thing I could do for my generation is equip them with the uh, skill sets to be able to think for themselves. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So, like, within your uh, K-12 upbringing, were you, like, learning this stuff in class or it just was completely autonomous and, like, you know? Yeah, so, so um, that's a good question, actually. But, you know, growing up, um, I didn't have no access to, um, you know, all I had was books. I had to go right. all route. You know, um, one way to hold people back is, you know, convincing them to kind of, you know, look for messages and other things. Right. You know, for example, you know, we have a whole generation that are visual le uh, learners now, not by even choice, but by, you know, just norm. Right. Right. 
right? So it's like a lot of us aren't even, we, we say we're visual learners, but the root thing we are is, you know, we're, it's, it's wired. It's like lady wired into us to think that we're visual learners. You know, but the best knowledge is derived in books, and we don't want to read. You know, so I started going to the library, and you know, that's, man, that's how I started. And Beats know. comes in and says, this is our statement. This is our product, fused with technology. This is how we speak, this is how we act, and this is how, you know, we, we just, we talk, right? You guys have to confine us. What do they do? They confined. Because they were at the forefront of that revolution. They understood what technology was, which is the incorporation of, you know, the ability to intellectual, uh, intellectually create with the ability to um, understand business. Google for not hiring a lot of minorities. Because even though these companies might have their own motives why they don't or do hire, you know, these and that, at the end of the day, they can bring a fact sheet back and say, there's not a lot of minorities to even hire, right? So, although that's a very valid point, instead of sitting down and, you know, uh, coming at these brands and these organizations and saying they don't hire enough, what we need to go back and do is go back to our own, re-educate, retrain, right? And then go back to them. And now it's like they have no choice but to hire because we're equipped with the latest skill sets. And if they choose not to hire, what do we have? We have the knowledge that we can implicate to create our own, you know, technology. So, yeah. And that's real game. Once again, you are tuned in to UCLA Ra Radio, and we have a very special guest in the building, Aja Santu. And we're going to go ahead and get into a couple records, and then we're going to come back and open on open up the phone line as well. Stay tuned. DJ Wisco. So outside of those engagements, you also want to speak uh, about your creative career. As like, you know, you're a rapper and producer as well. Yeah, so, um, you know, I produce, I, I rap. I've been rapping since, you know, uh, I was 10. Uh, my personal brand, you know, Idris Sandu, um, you can follow me on the gram, Twitter, it's Idris, I-D-D-R-I-S, underscore Sandu, S-A-N-D-U, and to find more information on ABLE, or, you know, just my personal brand and what I've worked on and, you know, projects I plan on, um, you know, launching in the next, you know, months, years, decades, um, you can go to IdrisSandu.com, and, you know, um, I have a, a non-profit called ABLE, and, you know, we're tackling industry, uh, you know, we're tapping into untapped industries like agriculture, like fashion, like art, like, you know, um, uh, communication, like, you know, just creating totally different things. And, you know, we're, we're recruiting as many people as we can. And, you know, those people will be at the forefront of creating the next digital revolutions or the next, you know, innovations. Because what we're doing is we're taking all that, no uh, all that knowledge we got from Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and we're not keeping it to ourselves. We're not launching the next billion dollar app. We bring that right back to the hood so our, you know, our mindsets and our people could just be equipped. So. Definitely. Respect, respect. And once again, you are tuned in to UCLA Radio. This is DJ Wisco and Foresight. We're going to get into some records and then jump right back into the mix. Stay tuned. Got a lot of the shit like this, nigga. And I ain't even said it or wrote it yet. I just feel it. Nah. Yeah. 